everyone and welcome to Warwick Anglican Parish. My name is Lizzie Gateschool and I'm the parish priest. This little clip accompanies part one of our online faith formation course, Being Christian. In this section, we reflect a bit more about baptism, what it means for us and what symbols that we use along the way. So let's make a beginning. Hopefully uh, you've got access to those readings that will be attached to this particular part today. They're on our Facebook page, the Warwick Anglican Faith Formation page. And also you will see there's an additional clip there and you will have a copy of the book. Let's make a start. Christians believe that God is one. What makes us distinct is that Christians also believe God has three parts, equal and interconnected. God who is one creates. God who is one shares our human lives with us in Jesus. And God is present with us to this day, energizing, breathing, blessing, immersing us in a life of love, faith and service. This part of the Holy Trinity is God, the Holy Spirit. Spirit in the Hebrew is sometimes the word is used ruach, spirit, breath. And I think that's a really important way to understand God's spirit. Our challenge as people of faith is to be awake or tuned into that love and to bless others, to pay it forward. So hopefully you will have had access now to this little book, Being Christian. Archbishop Rowan Williams talks about four different parts of the life of faith within the Anglican context. The first is baptism. So let's explore what baptism is all about, what it means. Was Jesus baptised? Why was Jesus baptised? And what's going on when we choose to be baptised? First of all, if you haven't read it, pause the clip and read the chapter now. Then make any notes, comments, questions. You might like to share those with me in a private post or to share them in group chat. I think a really important set of words to understand that connect to baptism is that baptism is about beginnings, it's about belonging, it's about linking our personal identities with something that is bigger, greater than ourselves. It's about committing to walk a particular path, committing ourselves to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Baptism is about immersion and that's a word that will come uh, out time and time again as you're reading chapter one of the book. Water and light, we know, are important to our life on the planet. We couldn't get very far without either. Now we use water and light as symbols in baptism. Remember that now, water and life, light are important, indispensable for life. We're saying the same thing about baptism, that within baptism, water and light are being used to say there is something indispensable about God's love, grace, the life of faith for our souls. You might like to pause the clip and read the very opening, first opening passage of the Jewish scriptures, the very start of the Christian Bible too, in the book of Genesis, Genesis 1, 1 to 4. That's one of our attached readings. You can see that from the very beginning of Jewish faith thought, water and light are present. And that, of course, connects then to Christian thought. From the very earliest moments of the Jewish faith, in that book of Genesis, a word that means beginnings, we share creation, worship, poetry or liturgy. And we're reminded that God moves over the face of the deep. That's a water reference, bringing order and beauty where there has been chaos and darkness and then commanding light to shine. Water and light are symbols of life. But that's not all they are. Water and light can also bring about death. Water and light might also bring about death. We know in our own country, right here in Australia, we are 
sometimes overwhelmed by huge and devastating bushfires and also by equally huge and devastating floods. But we know also that when the dust and the ash settle and when the floodwaters subside, that there is capacity for life to begin again, to go beyond chapters where there has been death, loss, endings. New life. That's important for us to remember. New growth, new life happens after those devastating moments of flood and fire. We're saying something similar spiritually and personally for us in a moment of baptism. Baptism is about life, it's about struggling, it's about uncertainty, it's about death, but then it's also about the hope of new life, new beginnings. If we make a leap forward from the Genesis creation liturgy into the Christian part of the Bible, we read the stories of Jesus. At the very beginning of Jesus' public life and ministry, he's baptised. Baptism is about beginnings. It's about immersion in life. As we read in Archbishop Rowan's book, baptism is about being in the depths. You can read the Mark's Gospel passage that I've attached to this particular post. It's Mark 1, 1 to 11. This is an artistic representation of Jesus' baptism. Here's Jesus, the central figure here, and here is John the baptizer. This is the Jordan River. Baptism is an outward symbol of something that we are saying is happening to us inwardly. God's grace is changing, acting, shaping, transforming our lives. Stuff that doesn't matter. Stuff that separates us from being in community, in communion with God, with others, with ourselves, is washed away. There's a death going on. The death of all that stuff, selfishness, greed, cruelty. We are immersed. We are being refreshed. And when we appear from the waters, new life is with us, growing inside us. We use water and light, the light of a candle, as physical symbols of all those big ideas, connecting baptism with life. We also use holy oil. It's an olive oil mix called chrism. It's a symbol of healing, of blessing and of calling. In ancient times, kings were marked out or anointed with oil. It's also something that has been used for thousands of years as a healing agent. As in life, we are saying so in faith. For me, one of the central ideas that the Archbishop's book just picks up beautifully is this one here. Let's read this through. Baptism means being with Jesus in the depths. There's that water. Symbology again. The depth of human need, including the depths of our own selves in their need. But also in the depths of God's love, in the depths where the Spirit is recreating and refreshing human life as God meant it to be. Water and light and the holy oil, symbols of faith, symbols of life. The Archbishop reflects, if all this is correct, baptism, and I've added, and the life of faith, does not confer on us a status that marks us off from everybody else. To be able to say, I'm baptised, is not to claim an extra dignity, let alone a sort of privilege that keeps you separate from and superior to the rest of the human race, but it is to claim a new level of solidarity with other people. Baptism is about belonging, identity, meaning and purpose. It is about being in solidarity with humanity with our planet through and in God's grace. So what does that look like? Christians look always to Jesus and we read his story in the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John and in various books and letters that form part of the Christian part of the Bible, the Christian scriptures. 
we know that Jesus was baptised and then immediately he acted. He listened always to God, tuning his life to God's will. He prayed. He spoke out. He spoke the truth to power. He fed the hungry and he reached out to honour and to heal those who are lost, the poor, the sick, people with disabilities, the young and the old. Others that uh, polite society had pushed to the margins. He showed through his life that God's preference was actually not for the powerful, the rich, the holy, the ones whose lives were privileged and blessed. Indeed, he was very critical of those people. Jesus was also a gifted storyteller and teacher. Indeed, that is one of the things that seems to have drawn people to him. The four Gospels give us a range of little parables, or short stories with hidden meanings or deeper layers, if you like. Stories that make a point. One of the most treasured of the parables is that of the Good Samaritan. And this is an artistic rendition of that story. Pause the clip if you like and read and reflect on Luke 10 verses 25 to 37. It's in that collection of readings attached to the post. Go and do likewise. This is how Jesus challenges his listeners. Reflect. What's in this story for me? If baptism is about beginnings, immersion in the depths of life, in all its struggle, in all its chaos, but also in the depths of God's love, then what is this story telling us about God's love? And what's it challenging us to do as far as our response goes? In Jesus' story, it's not the Jewish person like him who was the hero. The Jewish person here was, of course, the victim of the crime. And then two others, good, upstanding people, walked past. People who could have done the right thing if they'd maybe not been in such a hurry or not been so hidebound by rules. Instead, it's the Samaritan who's the hero. He's the person in Jesus' day and age who good Jewish folk would look on with some suspicion or even fear. Or perhaps they would look down their noses at him. Who might be our Samaritans? And who are our neighbours? There are a few questions at the end of the Archbishop's book. I've adapted them here. His questions are on page 18 and 19. Pause, reflect and have a conversation with someone. If you have any questions or thoughts or would like further information, as I say, please send me a private post or maybe join part of the group chat. Belonging, immersion, identity, beginnings, hope, meaning. Drawing on symbols of life to make big statements about the life of our spirit, the life of our soul, the life of faith in God. That's what's going on in baptism. Finally, as food for thought and inspiration, this clip that I've attached to this particular post, here it is here, tells the story of someone who, who was immersed in life, a baptised person who used what he had to make a difference in God's world. John Dixon's excellent documentary, For the Love of God, spends a few minutes on the life of the seventh Earl of Shaftesbury, Anthony Ashley Cooper. His life is incredible and it might give us pause for thought as to how we respond to God calling within our lives to make our baptism vows something that become real. As St Francis of Assisi once prayed, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Amen.